Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Jacob, and we're going to be having our all English lecture today. You know what that means? No Chinese teacher. No, 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 no. And Jacob and I are going to be very careful about not saying anything in Chinese because sometimes you know little Chinese words slip out every、sure. once in a while.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like when you're speaking Chinese with your friends, and an English word will be thrown in there, we do that too. So this is all about a beautiful plant called wisteria, and it's especially important in Japan. What do you know about wisteria, Jacob? I don't know if I've ever seen wisteria, but I've I've seen the word before. Uh huh. Me too. Here in Taipei, there's a famous tea shop called the Wisteria House,、oh. and it dates back to the Japanese period. It's near Daan Forest Park,、cool. and it's a really great place to go have some tea and some snacks. And it's very peaceful, and there's a pond outside. <laughs> and so when I see the name Wisteria, I just imagine sort of a calm and peaceful place like this tea house. Sounds heavenly.、Mm. Well, we're going to talk about why it's so important in Japan, and maybe even a place you can put on your things、uh, or places you want to visit. I definitely want to someday go see this flower park we're going to talk about.、Mm. And my little sister is going to Japan next year, and so as I saw this article, I thought, oh, I've got to tell my sister Heather. Well, right now I'm going to read through today's article, and then we'll be back to. Break down some of these passages, some of the vocabulary words, and just some terms you may not be familiar with. Picture Japan in spring, and you're likely to think of the nation's iconic cherry blossoms. Yet later in the season comes another equally beautiful bloom, wisteria. This climbing vine, native to Japan, has vivid purple flowers. And from April to May, it seems as though the country is covered in its cascading curtains of color. Having fascinated Japanese people for centuries, Wisteria's exotic lure has had a profound effect on the country's art and culture. As the delicate-looking vine can survive more than 50 years, it's a symbol of immortality and eternity. Thus, a kimono that depicts Wisteria blossoms. Is traditionally only worn at the most formal events. What's more, the flower's color has long been associated with Japanese society's imperial or noble families, with the vine representing the reigning Fujiwara clan during the Heian era. Around this time, the practice of viewing wisteria in bloom became a popular spring ritual. Later, in 1826. The famed plant inspired the first performance of Fuji Musume, or Wisteria Maiden, which has since become one of the nation's beloved classical dances. For those keen to experience this influential plant in all its splendor, there's no better place to visit than Ashikaga Flower Park in Tochigi Prefecture. Here you can find more than 350 diverse types of wisteria. Two 80-meter-long tunnels of its white and yellow blossoms, and a wisteria tree that's over 150 years old. This great wisteria tree's extraordinary canopy of blooms spreads over 1,000 square meters. Considering the picturesque way the vine transforms landscapes, as well as its role in the country's cultural legacy. It's clear why wisteria is regarded as one of the wonders of Japan. Okay, well there's the article, and first let's take a look at our title: the breathtaking beauty of wisteria in Japan. Okay, the breathtaking beauty. If something is breathtaking, you can actually see these words here. Breath is. Breath is what you breathe, right? And if something takes your breath away, it's kind of <gasps>、mm. makes you surprised. You might say, kind of gasp. Yeah. So breathtaking beauty is something that's very, very beautiful. Something that actually <gasps> makes you gasp or takes your breath away. So we're talking about this wisteria plant in Japan that's very beautiful. It's breathtakingly beautiful. 
Okay, let's take a look at that first paragraph there. As we like to do here at English Digest, we often will paint a picture in the first paragraph,、mm. or get you to picture something in your mind. So here we're asking you to picture Japan in spring. I've never been to Japan in springtime. I'd like to go because those、uh, cherry blossoms look really beautiful when、For、I、sure. see pictures. Yeah. So you're likely to think of the nation's iconic or very famous or represent. Cherry blossoms. They are pretty famous for that. Jacob is an American, as I am, and we've got a city in America that's really famous for cherry blossoms too, and that's Washington D.C. I believe the Japanese did they sort they, of gift us yeah, the, the trees? Yeah. And you notice that Jacob used gift as a verb. We'll often do that.、Mm. Yeah, he gifted them. Yeah, they were given to the politicians there in Washington D.C. long ago, and we love them. They're beautiful. Yeah. So、uh, that's what we usually. Think about when we picture Japan in spring, but here the sentence continues. Yet later in the season comes another equally beautiful bloom. Bloom here is just another word for flower, and that's the wisteria. Right. There's also the word blossom,、mm -hmm. blossoms that you might see, the cherry blossoms. Now, blossom is basically the flower, especially of a fruit tree. So in the spring, when the trees start to grow leaves, you will see a little flower that comes out, and that's the blossom. So we have cherry blossoms here in this article. You also might have、um, apple tree blossoms, apple blossoms. Peach trees also have blossoms. So yeah, these are the flowers of a fruit tree. Really, really pretty. So this is a kind of climbing vine, which is a special kind of plant. We love climbing vines where I'm from in Arizona.、Mm. We have a lot of ivy, and it climbs up the wall、uh, around my house. And my mom especially loved that. So a vine is a plant with long, thin stems, and they can attach themselves to other plants or trees or buildings or fences, like I just said. If you're familiar with the grape plant, we have grape vines. Yes. Yeah. So it's a vine, and it's native to Japan, meaning it was、uh, discovered. There first, it was born there. You could say it's its homeland. The country is covered with this vine, which has vivid purple flowers. Vivid is very, very bright, very beautiful, colorful, and this happens from April to May. So if you miss the cherry blossoms, which are a little earlier, you might、uh, get a chance to see the wisteria in Japan if you're there from April to May. It says here it seems as though the country is covered. And it's cascading curtains of color, as though is just a way we use to say like. So as if, as though, it makes you think that something's true, though you don't necessarily know it is. It seems as though it's like the country is covered in its cascading curtains of color. How do we use cascading typically, Jacob? When I think of cascading,、mm. I first think of a waterfall.、Mm. If you see a waterfall in your mind, you can imagine water kind of coming off of a some land and flowing down、mm. into maybe a stream or a pond below. So a waterfall will cascade over the side of a cliff or something like that. And I think that's what they're trying to paint the picture of: is this vine of these beautiful purple flowers, kind of almost like a waterfall falling over a tree or something like that down to the Ground.、Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use cascading to talk about someone's beautiful long hair,、mm. which is more literary. It's not, you know, it's figurative. You could say it's not real, but it's like someone has cascading waves of hair、mm. falling over her shoulders. So it's a painting of really quite a beautiful picture. Let's move on to the next paragraph. It says, "Having fascinated Japanese people for centuries, Wisteria's exotic lure has had a profound effect on the country's art and culture, which isn't surprising." So. The Japanese people are fascinated with this particular plant, and so a lot of their art and culture will have portions of the wisteria flower, or maybe even the vine itself, painted in there. Wisteria is、uh, described here as being exotic. 
When something is exotic, guys, it makes you think of something that's really special, unusual, very interesting, something that you don't always come across. Exotic to me also seems to describe things that come from other countries、sure. that I'm not familiar with. So it's got an exotic lure. Lure here is usually used as a verb, but here we're using it as a noun. It just means to kind of persuade somebody to come closer, or maybe do something that's Maybe a little dangerous. Maybe also,、uh, um, yeah. With fishing, if、uh-huh. you ever go fishing,、oh, yeah. you will need to use a lure, and that's what you put at the end of your hook. Maybe you might have bait that would be a worm or something、mm-hmm. like that. But sometimes when you go fishing, you use a lure,、mm-hmm. and that's what actually attracts the fish to your hook. So if you're fishing, you might use a lure to kind of. Reel the fish in, or attract the fish to your line. There,、mm-hmm. we often will see stores or companies luring in customers、mm, with、yes. really great ads or advertisements, or maybe good sales. I know here in Taiwan, if the department stores are having a sale,、uh, they're able to lure. Thousands of people into their stores. So it's both a noun and a verb.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. So here we've got another vocabulary word here: profound. If something has a profound effect on somebody or something else, it means it's quite strong. It's kind of an intense feeling. For an example, I could say a mother's behavior has a profound effect on her children, or a father. Jacob has kids. A father's behavior has a profound effect on his. Children. Oh gosh, does it? Yes, it does. You better rewatch it. <laughs> I should be careful. <laughs> right. So for profound, also maybe if you feel something very deeply, so、mm-hmm. you could say that oh my friend,、uh, his dog died, and he felt a profound sadness、yeah. over the death of his pet or something like、mm-hmm. that. Okay. So right. So we're saying that wisteria has this profound effect, and it's very exotic or foreign, very special. Let's continue. As the delicate-looking vine can survive for more than fifty years, it's a symbol of immortality and eternity. Okay, so it looks delicate. Delicate, of course, means a little fragile. F R A G I L E. Something that's fragile or delicate.、Mm-hmm. It looks like it might break easily, so you have to be very careful when you're touching it or handling it.、Mm-hmm. So it's a delicate-looking vine, but it lives a long time. It can survive. For more than fifty years, which is something you know, if you see a tree, yeah, a tree can survive for fifty years. It seems stronger.、Yeah. I don't know a lot of plants <laughs> that can survive for that long. So for that reason, it's a symbol of immortality. Immortality means. Living forever. If you're immortal, I M M O R T A L. If you're immortal, it means you won't ever die. Think of like a superhero. Some superheroes are immortal. They're so strong that they can live forever. Or vampires. Oh yes, <laughs> which、vampires. aren't real, as you know, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, eternity here is a word that means the whole of time, forever and ever. There's no end. There's no beginning. Eternity. And some of us hope that when we pass away or we die, that、uh, we'll live on in eternity.、Hmm. Yeah, hopefully. So here's another vocab word. If something is eternal, that's the adjective form of that.、It、means again, it lasts forever. We'll often see that word immortality and immortal if you're talking about superheroes or things like vampires and werewolves who are supposed to live forever. Thus, it says a kimono. That's a type of Japanese dress. It kind of looks like a big jacket that you put on, and it has a big fat tie around、yeah. the middle. Yeah, I've、kind、had of their ceremonial their, or traditional dress. Very、right? traditional, very beautiful. It looks like a long. Loose coat, and it's often worn for special occasions, special ceremonies. I once got to wear a kimono in a play I was in、Ooh. about Japan. We're going to take a quick break here, guys, just for a few minutes. No Chinese teacher, so hold on. We'll be right back to continue talking about wisteria. Welcome back, guys. You're listening to English Digest, and we're talking about the breathtaking beauty of wisteria in Japan. As we've told you, a wisteria is a beautiful climbing vine. So it's got long stems, and it can attach itself. 
I was actually going to say、yeah. mm-hmm. the Chinese word. I'm not going to say the Chinese word, but I'm、right. thinking of it in my head. Yeah. I think it translates into purple vine. Oh, that's perfect. I、yeah. do think it does. <laughs>、uh, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it does. So that's why we're talking about this, and this is going through my head. Oh, wisteria, purple vine. Purple oh, the vine. Chinese purple vine. Yeah, and it is. <laughs> it has very beautiful purple flowers. So, this is a special treat if you get to go sightseeing in Japan. You don't want to miss seeing some of the places. Places that are world famous for their wisteria.、Hmm. The best time to go looks to be from April to May. Right, so about now maybe. Yeah, yeah. I know. I wish I could just get in a plane and go see this. Ah,、oh, it's just a couple of days after my birthday.、Oh. I love this time of the year because all of the trees and the flowers are coming out, and it's quite beautiful. Now, when we left you, we were talking about a kimono and how that type of dress or type of clothing depicts wisteria blossoms. Traditionally, clothing that's only worn at formal events. So, a kimono, even though it's traditional clothing, nowadays. Everybody's pretty modern, you know. We、mm. don't often put our traditional clothing on. Kind of a shame because I love it. But <laughs> the kimono is usually saved up for very special events, formal events. Sometimes they're worn in ceremonies. Sure. And oftentimes you'll see that wisteria blossom appear on the fabric. So、uh, you want to check that out. The next time I see a kimono, I'm going to take a closer look to see if I see any wisteria. That's a good idea.、Yeah. Okay. So the formal events, but what's More, the flower's color has long been associated with Japanese society's imperial or noble families.、Mm. Okay, so right, so purple here, the flower's color, is what we associate with, what we think of when we are talking about Japanese society's imperial or noble families. I think we can draw a comparison to the color yellow. In the Chinese tradition,、uh, the color yellow, I think, was reserved for the emperor of China back in the imperial days, and so only the emperor would be able to wear this yellow color.、Mm-hmm. So you can think of the color of wisteria as the same thing, the same association. It was associated or only reserved for. The higher classes of society, the noble families, or the imperial rulers. Yeah, you could also call these、uh, families royalty. You know, the royals. Sure.、Uh, there's still some countries that continue on with their royalty. For example, England. Yes. That has their royal family. Well, it's interesting that purple was associated with their noble families because in the Western world, purple is actually a color that's also reserved for royalty. That's true, yeah, right? If you think、is. of old old stories and,、yeah. and tales from kings and queens、yeah. and things, purple, purple is kind of the yeah, it's kind of the representative royal color. color. And in their history, they actually used the wisteria vine to represent the reigning Fujiwara clan during the Heian era. I'm not really good with Japanese history. I'm sorry. S- yeah, sounds good. But、uh, kind of sounds like it's one of the、uh, dynasties. Like China has dynasties, right? Well, if you're reigning, guys, this is a verb that means you're part of a nobility, a royal family, perhaps, and you're governing a country or a group of people. You're reign. Meaning over them, this was the Fujiwara clan. Clan just is another word for a, a family. Sometimes we'll use it in sort of a casual way now. If you have a really big family, yeah, the clan's coming over for、hmm. dinner tomorrow. My family's big, so we could use that word. But yeah, the reigning Fujiwara clan used the wisteria to represent their family. That's right. Reigning too, you can think of as the current ruler of、mm-hmm. a monarchy. For instance, Queen Elizabeth II is、yeah. the reigning queen of England or、mm-hmm. the queen of the Great Britain. Okay, so around this time, the practice of viewing wisteria in bloom became a popular spring ritual.、Mm. Okay, so back during the Heian era. Around this time, people would get together and make a day of it. So the practice of viewing wisteria in bloom—you'd get people together, maybe you'd pack a picnic or something like that, and you would take it outside and you would sit there and you would actually look at the flowers. And I think this is what people still do today with the cherry blossoms, yeah, right? Isn't、totally. this a very popular pastime in Japan around this time, where people will get together with their friends or their families? Pack a picnic lunch and go outside and view the wisteria in bloom. This is called a ritual, or this is described as a popular spring ritual. Now, a ritual 
is sort of a formal ceremony,、mm -hmm. a series of acts done in the same way. So it's something that is done in the past, and today we can continue to do it. Maybe around Chinese New Year, you might put some offerings on a table and burn some incense.、Mm -hmm. This is a kind of ritual、mm -hmm. that you do for your ancestors, for the people in your family from long ago. You can also use ritual to talk about something you do every day, or at least fairly often. For example, my morning ritual is to get up. Go to the gym. Come home. Yeah, I don't eat breakfast because I'm trying not to eat so much. <laughs> come <laughs> home and then change for work wherever I'm recording that day. So if you have a ritual, it's something you do again and again the same way. We have a washing your hands ritual right right now. Right. So if you want to get your hands very clean and kill those germs, you put some soap on and you wash for 20 seconds. Is, That's a、uh, ritual. Is coffee part of your morning ritual? No, I don't drink. Coffee. Oh, it's part of many people's、I、morning know, ritual.、Yeah. They need that first cup of、that、coffee、caffeine. in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't want to get addicted to it, so I needed it. No,、ah. I drink a lot of water. That's、uh, that's good too. No.、Yeah. Um, if we go on ahead here, it said later after this particular Heian era, they had in 1826 the fame plant inspired the first performance of something called Wisteria Maiden, or in Japanese it's Fuji Musume.、Um, I had to look it up. I'd never heard of it. Oh.、Um, and it since then has become one of the nation's beloved classical dances. Kind of sounds like a famous say ballet, except Japanese dance. I looked it up. Because I thought, what is it about? And there's a woman in it who's the wisteria maiden, and she holds a wisteria branch until one day she becomes、uh, smitten, or she falls in love with a young man who's passing by, and she steps out of the painting to capture his attention. Oh my gosh! So it's kind of fantastic. So you might want to check that out. Maybe there's some performances. If you're in Japan as a you know as a tourist, maybe you could go see this. Right. And that sort of takes us back to the original part of this,、uh, or the opening part of this paragraph,、mm -hmm. where it says that it inspires or has a, a deep effect on the country's art and culture. Here we have an example of culture here,、mm -hmm. and the wisteria plays a big, a big part in that. Okay, so let's move on to our third paragraph here. For those keen to experience this influential plant in all its splendor. Okay, so for those keen to experience or to view, to kind of take in this influential, this important plant in all its splendor. Here, splendor is kind of in all its glory. Yeah. G L O R Y.、Yeah. So something that has a lot of splendor is very, you might say, it's very great and impressive, and it's also very beautiful, right? Kind of gorgeous, yeah. Yeah. There's a song when I was growing up. My mom loved. It was called "Love Is a Many Splendored Thing." When I see splendor, I always think of that song. It just pops into my head. Yeah, something that's really, truly beautiful and lovely, in all its glory, is a really good substitute for that particular phrase.、Mm. So magnificent, beautiful, grand, as if it is part of royalty. There's no better place to visit to see this beautiful vine than. Ashikaga Flower Park, and it's located in the Tochigi Prefecture. Prefecture is like an area、yeah. that a city is divided into. We have districts, districts here, districts, <laughs> cities, and districts. Yes, we have、uh, different areas of the city in Taipei as well. Yeah. So if you have never been there, it sounds like this is the place you want to go to see this plant in all its splendor. Sure, and in this particular flower park, the Ashikaga Flower Park, you can find more than 350 diverse types of wisteria. Diverse here is an adjective, and it means sort of different or varied. Varied is V A R I E D. So different or varied types of wisteria. So you might have different sort of sizes,、mm -hmm. different colors,、mm -hmm. different shapes, maybe. The blossoms, the flowers have different shapes, so that's what makes them diverse. And there are more than 350 of them. It's amazing. Wow, that's crazy. I wanted to 
mention here, English can be a little crazy because we'll often have two or three different pronunciations for a word, and this is one of them. You'll also hear people say diverse. Oh, diverse, but diverse, diverse, yeah. diverse. They're both correct, guys. Just pick the one you like and stick with that. But you will hear both pronunciations. Yeah, diverse. I think of this when I think of all the kinds of music I like. It's quite diverse. The music、sure. I like is very diverse. Yes, I love opera. Yes, I love musical theater. But I also I also love、um, some hip hop is fun、uh-huh. to dance to, and I also love、um, R and B. So you can describe different things within the same category as being diverse, right? Sure. People are very diverse. We're all people, but we're all different. That's right. So here's a thing you want to see, though. Right there in the flower park, they have two 80 meter long tunnels of its white and yellow blossoms. That's quite long. And they also have a wisteria tree that's over 150 years old.、Mm. I love old trees. Yeah, this is just definitely a tourist attraction. You could say this is a place you'd want to go see. That's right. This great wisteria tree's extraordinary canopy of blooms spreads over 1,000 square meters. So it has a name. This tree that's 150 years old. It's called the Great Wisteria, and it has a canopy. Now, a canopy you can think of as the top of something.、Mm. So if you're in the forest and you look up, you can see the canopy of trees above you. That's sort of the branches and the leaves that might blow. Lock out. You can't even see the sun, or you can't see the sky. So it might be a little bit darker in the forest, but due to the canopy of trees in a forest. We'll often use that word for. Beds that have that cloth that drapes over the top、ah, of the four、yes. four poster. We call it a canopy bed. I wanted one when I was a little girl,、yeah. so my mom sewed one for me. Honey,、uh, yeah, very fun. But that's a canopy. It's something that covers something else. But as Jacob was using it, we'll often use it in a very, you know. Literary way, something that just gives you this idea of a cover. So, are those trees really a canopy? Well, well they're covering overhead. I've seen books where they'll talk about the canopy of stars in the heavens. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of a fun word. So, considering the picturesque. Way the vine transforms landscapes as well as its role in the country's cultural legacy. It's clear why wisteria is regarded as one of the wonders of Japan. So yeah, now I understand why they love this so much. When you talk about a country's legacy or somebody's legacy, it could be someone in your family who has a great legacy. It's the things that they've done in their lives、um, that they're famous for or well known for, and they pass along to the next generation. Right. And、we'll often talk about,、uh, you know, like a famous musician's legacy, like Elvis. He left a large legacy behind,、uh, and that people still today talk about him and talk about his music. So this is、uh, the end of our Wisteria in Japan lecture.、We、I want to go now. Yeah, yeah let's me go too. To, let's go to Japan and see this beautiful Wisteria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's a great time of the year. It's still nice and cool because you know I hate it when it's hot. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today, guys. We hope you'll join us again at English Digest for English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Jacob. Bye. Bye bye.